What's up, everyone? It's your Captain Cheppy here. I just wanted to get into some description before we get into the full gameplay of Arcade Spirit. What if the 1983 video game market crash never happened? Set in 2000XX, Arcade Spirits is a visual novel romantic comedy with a different history where arcades still reign supreme as the ultimate place to play. After a period of turbulent employment, your character starts an exciting new job at the Funplex, a popular local arcade with a team of staff that are eccentric as the customers. From fierce programmers and dedicated high score chasers to creative cosplayers and tinkering programmers, the neon lights and buzzing atmosphere of the Funplex is welcome home to many. But where will this newfound employment opportunity take you? Who will you meet along the way? And will you finally find the romance you've been seeking? So that's right, Arcade Spirits is a visual novel, but not just any visual novel, actually. Arcade Spirits also has dating simulator elements with seven different characters who can be romanced or just befriended. Romance is completely optional in this game. You don't actually have to do it at all if you don't want to. Uh, nearly all dating simulators require you to undertake some kind of mandatory romance encounter, but uh, Arcade Spirits uh, is actually unique in the genre that you don't actually have to at all. It's one of the parts of the game if you want to be in the romance, if you want to get all romanced and everything like that, then you're more than welcome to, but this game isn't all revolved around that which I find that is pretty cool, actually. Thank you, guys, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy this video. I really want to say thank you to Arcade Spirits for giving me an early access code and being able to stream this and actually be able to make videos on this game. It's a really great pleasure to have the opportunity to play this game and especially to show you guys what it's like to play this game just so then you can see for yourself. But I will say make sure you choose your own choices and don't just follow mine just so you could get a different ending. Because like I said, depending on the choices you make, it's a different ending for everyone. So make sure you go ahead and do that. And again, I really want to thank Arcade Spirits for giving me the opportunity to play this game uh, before it was fully released on for consoles. It was an amazing opportunity, and thank you so much. But guys, let's just get into the video. So I guess I'll see you guys in the video. Oh, he will. It is a distant year 20xx. And for the first time, I'm extremely in control of my destiny. I'm no longer merely working in an arcade. Now I'm working on my future. Which I admittedly still involves working in an arcade, but still, my future. I'll admit, it feels weird. I've been growing so used to going with the flow, letting life batter me and bruise me. Batter and bruise me. That having an honest, or sorry, true and honest hand on the controls is a bit terrifying. Everyone's counting on me to keep the, the flame of Miss Francine Funplex alive as we move forward in the new era of FFT2F. And well... I'm going, I'm going into this assuming everything's going to work out just fine. It's only because this al the alternative is too awful to even think about. This has to be just fine. It's our second chance at the dream of the fun flex, and that means it's got to work, right? Surely with all the brilliant minds in our group put together, we can do this. Naomi keeps asking if I'm really as okay as I sound, and I mean, she knows me pretty well by this point, but I gotta fake it till I make it, right? And hopefully my positive attitude is helping the others rise to the occasion. If I don't show any stress, if I do confidence, everything will be fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. Oh my god, two flower. <laughs> now all that's left is to get through opening day without incident. I arrived early that morning to go over my last minute preparations and make sure everything is in order. Plus, Juniper was sick of watching me pace back and forth at home after breakfast. So she lovingly shoved me out of the apartment and told me to be productive. Now I stood in awe of the building. It's a dream I poured my heart and soul into. <sighs> I still barely believe in myself. Paused a moment to let the reality finally hit me and then stepped into my destiny. Nice. Pushing open the doors of FFG2 Flag, I was greeted by a relative peace and quiet, just the beeps and boops and people moving about doing last minute preparations. We traveled along the road 
or just road, sorry, ever since the great wake to rent conspiracy. Gavin secured us a great rental space and abandoned pizza place that with that all too familiar triangle roof. Nobody else wanted it, but we didn't care about the funny shape. Fortune's in our favor. Now, I really couldn't have done all the renovations this place needed without the help of our financial benefactor. Percy gave up a large chunk of his savings for this. I hope we could do right by him. Considering it was going to be charity origi originally, now it's going to be us. We went to a familiar layout, and if it ain't broke and all that, to show that we still got the spirit and passion that made the funplex great. But it's not all a carbon copy. We got a few new additions that Francie would even be proud of. Oh, that's dope. The video wall is a nice touch. That one was my idea. It alternate, alternates between running music videos, game promos, and high school leaderboards. High school. High score. Dang it. We also repainted and did a great, uh, did a general update on all the app appliances and, fix and fixtures to give a more finished feel. Less of a retired pizza place turned arcade vibe. Naomi and Percy worked together to pick out games with a decidedly retro feel, considering Gecko's focus on ticket, tickety gambling-ish gambling games. This helps us stand out from the competition. She put in a lot of hard work restoring them, and truthfully, we've run into a lot of problems along the way, but watching her tirelessly work to perfect them is inspiring. As for Queen Bee's experiment into advanced streamer support, well, I'm sure... I'm unsure of how this will pan out, but she's confident in it. Such confidence is contagious. She's invited a few big name streamers to drop in on opening day and podcast from their makeshift little studio. That'll build up some buzz for the arcade far and wide. All of my choices, all of my decisions, all of my choices make this. Made FFG2 Flower what it is. So much labor and love went into this project from all of us, and now all that's left is to officially open these doors. But before the paper hour begins, I still want to do one last check of operations, just in case. Since we opted for a basic arcade, honestly, so that was the breeze. Naomi and Ashley worked together to get the games up and running. Ashley managed to impress Naomi when she pulled out her long-forgotten skills with electronics. Naomi seemed to be busying herself with a double, triple, and even quadruple checks on every game prior to opening. Check that booty. She's been busy, uh, she's been busying herself, doubling, tripling, and even quadrupling, checking every game prior to the opening. Not that I mind or anything. Just, you know. Hold on. Hold on. I just really wanted to check out that booty and it really fucking, it really just fucked me up. That's what I get. That's what I get for subjecting her. Constantly subjecting her. I cannot believe that. Is Michael not on stream anymore? I only see one viewer and definitely sure I saw that. But Michael would have immediately started getting there. Fucking shit. Oh! What? Is Dell up? Okay, either way, imagine me sliding on the floor to look under her for that booty. So, talk to me, we good? Or, you know, I want you to talk to me, but turn back around. I want you to talk to me from behind. <laughs> hey, Captain. She greets you with a warm hug before resuming her game tinkering. 
yeah, everything's good. I'm just making sure it's super double plus good, you know? I want my babies in tip-top shape. Great, great. Since we're focusing entirely on the games, we need to make sure that they're absolutely perfect. Agreed, and you can count on me to deliver. Uh, I'd better hurry up and finish my checks, though. We're opening soon, and I want to finish this game. As you were, then. Damn, she didn't even give me that booty. Good. <laughs> Not that I was too worried about the games. Keeping things simple worked out well for us. Percy was right. 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 I think those plastic arcade is right in our wheelhouse. I get my quick check in. I know it's the clock. And it's unforgiving hands tell me it's not too long. Not long now. It's gonna be fine. We all let our regulars know the spirit of the Funplex had moved. They promised to show up on the opening day. Advertising flyers, interviews with arcade fan sites, and podcasts. People will show up. Everything will be fine. We can do this. As long as no unforeseen problems pop up. Gavin, we've got a problem. Gavin, we're minutes from opening the doors. Unless the building is literally on fire. Is there something that can wait? Unfortunately, no. Naomi may have put FFG2 flower in jeopardy. Don't listen to him. He's worrying over nothing. Seriously? Yes, I'm certain that the lawyers would just pack up and go away once you tell them that the whole thing is worrying over nothing. Ugh, it's just a penguin. Who cares? Even if someone cares, who's going to know? Come on, Gavin. Why do you have such a... Spit. <laughs> Why do you have to be such a control freak over every little detail? The devil's in the details, and thanks to your actions, we're going to end up sued to heck and back. Hell and back, sorry. Where I... Where I'm sure you can plead your case with the devil himself. I'm on data, so the stream is frozen, so I'm here in spirit again. Asgo! What's up, man? It's been a long time since I've seen you. I have no earthly idea what this is about. I'd rather like to have an earthly idea what this is about. Please, just explain. Fine, fine. Gavin, you tell her. Then I'll explain why you're wrong. Gavin rubs out his temples, feeling a headache coming on. Naomi wants to put her pango up front. I don't think it'll earn any tokens, but I'm willing to let that go in the spirit of compromise and to support her dreams. How very noble of you. But she's put a topper on it, and that's the problem. A topper? What? A piece of cool artwork you stick to the top of the cabinet to attract players. Like a sign or a statue or something. They're usually slowed with deluxe versions of the game cabinets, and... And Pango doesn't have one. Not an official one, anyway. So Naomi made one by taking a PNG statue and repainting it to look like Pango. Okay, I'm with you so far. What's Ugh. the problem? Do you have any idea what the Penji brand even is, Captain? It's uh, some Japanese corporate mascot. It's I've seen, it, I've seen it all over the place. Exactly. An iconic character, the Matsu Matsushita Collective. Uh, a corporation which is not if only I knew when streams were I'd be here every day I, I well you could have you could have your notifications on I I don't know man I've been streaming different hours because of the whole pandemic thing well, I mean once I go back to my normal job like I'll have like a whole schedule but because it's a pandemic thing I'm doing a bunch of like 500 other things besides this trying to film other things oh kind of all over the place i won't stream i won't stream before 2 p.m central standard time or sorry 12 p.m central standard time if i do there has to be like a really good reason for it but before that no so anytime after 12 p.m central standard time and the latest i will start a stream is probably 8 p.m central standard time so you just have that eight hour window to just like look so, you just look on and off for it. Exactly, an iconic character of the Matsuki Collective, a corporation which is not exactly known for leniency when it comes to copyright violations. Yes, yes, we live in the age of social media. Brands are becoming more aware that fan works are free promotions. Except Matsuki has decided not on board with that. Kind of 
I've heard tales of them suing children's daycare centers just to unlicense Kenji decorations on their wall. They've driven people into the poorhouse or pirating Kenji anime. And now Naomi has doomed us all by defacing the idol of a vengeful god capitalism to make her precious fake Pango statue. But you're gonna be sued into the ground the instant photos of that surface online. Oh, uh. Exaggerate much, Gavin? Come on! Some company over in Japan isn't gonna give a crap about a red penguin on top of their art on top of an arcade cabinet in a little place like ours. No one's so intended for the FFG two flower, of course, but we are small time. So what if they find out? What if they get mad? We just apologize and take it down. Come to think of it, I guess I know more about Penji than I thought I did. Penji is so universal, so per pervasive that it's like background radiation. I don't even notice the I don't even notice the character. But I've heard but I have heard stories Gavin talked about. Generally speaking, they don't end well for the little guy. And we're the little guy. I really, really should talk to Naomi out of this. Gavin doesn't argue just to win. He only argues when it believes that the point he's trying to make. He believes we're in danger. Uh, Twitch is whack, yeah. Uh, I'm glad that I don't have to decide between the two. That's great. But how am I going to lay this down to her? I only listen to reason. It's too risky. Maybe we can compromise on this amount. I think the first one is the only one. The second one is just like kind of being like it's something she doesn't want to hear. We all think in we all we all think in one. Sora. Thank you, Sora. Naomi, I'm sorry. I know you love your game, but Gavin's right. We can't risk a lawsuit. But, but, oh no. Oh no, why did I say that? I, it's not just a statue. Why would I say it's just a statue? It's just a statue, Naomi. Pango doesn't need a fancy topper. People will play it anyway and will come to love it the same way you love it. It's a promise. Okay? Captain, no. No. Gavin's always doing this. He's always stepping on my dreams while he's claiming to protect me. And, 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 and you're always pulling me back when I want something. Like at the auction and. Wait, what? I didn't, I, what? Oh, no. I'm not saying that. And I should be able to decorate it however I want. Oh, fuck, this is all happening. But I'm not. <sighs> no, it's no helping her. We are in the middle of it yet another conflict between Gavin and Naomi, and she won't back down. Too invested in winning this. Naomi storms off to her workshop, slams the door shut behind her. Quickly, I move to follow her to explain, but Gavin stops me. Captain, we need to open the arcade, and you have to be there for the opening ceremony. Fuck that! The arcade can wait! It really can't. We need to get the penguin down and open the doors. I'm sorry. I take it from someone who Naomi hates. It's best to let her cool down a bit first. 
I stand in the way of her dreams far too often, I know. I hate doing it. I hate asking others to do it in my stead, and I apologize for having to involve you in that. Tommy doesn't hate you, it's just, well... <sighs> You're both perfectionists. You want things to be absolutely right, as you see it. But the as-you-see-it part is the problem. She's fighting for what she thinks is right, same as you. You've got more in common than you think, but it leads to situations like this, so... It's a bit of an impasse. I feel I still feel removing the penguin is the right thing to do. I can't back down on that. But that doesn't mean we need to be ad adversarial. Plenty of blame to go around in this instinct, including my own. And I suppose my insistence that we focus on her uh, least favorite kind of game, prizes, and ticket redemptions has not helped the matters. Clearly, I need to speak with her more, try to understand her on her own terms. Perhaps I've been avoiding directly addressing this conflict for too long, but I feel she'd rather see neither of us at the moment, perhaps later, after the opening ceremonies are complete. Oh. For now, I'm afraid we need to tend to our arcade first and foremost. Excuse me. Gavin moves to take the dodgy-looking red penguin off Naomi's game before any customers can get a look at it. He does take care not to damage it, however. I can't handle this right now. As much as I want to stop everything and sort through this mess, I I've got a job to do today. It will be time for <laughs> time later to patch things up with Naomi, presumably. I need to at least try to put this turmoil behind me so I can focus on the first day of FFG2 Flower with a smile. Despite reeling from the incident just now, despite my nerves, I'm ready to do this, Saya, because I have to be ready. No choice. I've got big plans for the opening ceremony. I'm going to open the doors, give my prepared speech to the gathered masses, and stay on hand to greet gamers as they enter. Stepping to the forefront, I grasp the door's handles and throw the gates of the FFG2 flower wide. Welcome, welcome to all. I hope that... I don't even have time to finish one line of my big dramatic speech. The crowd spills through the doors and runs right past me, eager to get to those games. Immediately, the arcade fills with the sounds of beeps and boops, games starting up, people laughing with delight as they find their favorites. Although goes my entire opening ceremony plans out the window, I had all sorts of stuff planned, but if folks want to just get gaming, who am I to argue? After a few minutes of final checks around the place, I decide to move into phase two, meet and greet guests around the arcade. I walk the arcade like I did in my four attended days, talking to folks, making sure everything's running smoothly. Although I could probably track down Naomi too, assuming she wasn't talked yet, which may not be the case. FFG Two Flowers my domain, open to my exploration needs. Where should I visit first? Mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just. Give a second for Naomi. I, f yeah, I feel like I need to. Okay, so just trust me on this one. Since we decided to stick with the basics, there aren't too many places to hang out and not play games. It's all games all the time. Surprisingly, Percy and Gavin have found a quiet corner near the change machine. Tanks, completely Much tanks. Obliged. I'm glad for your little tip. I was ready to invest a good chunk of my pocketbook in that company. All my hard work would have tanked right alongside it. Private course for my sibling snatch up technology companies. You pump and dump, and you also they stir up excitement and acquisition. Then they drop it once it gets cold. I've never seen one of their vendors bear fruit for very long. Thanks for the short attention spans. I'm glad I could save you and the heartache. Ah, oh. uh, no offense. I think I can handle a few accidental heart-related puns without going to a heart or cardiac arrest, my good fellow. But it's good to avoid the pothole on the road of finance, yes? Especially with so many of my resources already tied up in FFG 2 flower. I approach them in what seems to be a natural lull in the conversation. Although talk of finances is itself quite a downer. So, strike market thought. I like to do my trade in the morning before I come to the arcade. Get all that bother over with so I can focus on Loopy. Mope, mope, mopey. Afraid we're being outstandingly boring at the moment, Captain. Just two overly serious gentlemen talk about finance. That's fine. I'm adulting at 110% efficiency today. Having started a new business myself, I should probably learn about it now. 
about how, like, money works. Oh, would you like to know about? Like, <laughs> I'd like to invest in our future, think long term, you know? Thriving for many years to come rather than jumping to at the easiest profit I can. Any tips? Find you to take. My own investments are preferably long term, yes. I make moment to moment trades, but they're backed by the stability of stock. Start big rod. Even after I'm gone, I expect many of the cash out gradually, and I've hired a phalanx of lawyers to carry out my wishes over the next uh, 30 years. Gavin, how about I share you my portfolio? Give you some ideas on how to build up the nest egg of FF2 Free Flyer. I'd be honored. I'd let you two I'll let you two handle the fine details. The two seek deeper and deeper in a conversation about currency exchanges, fiscal policy, tax rate changes, and I start to lose consciousness. <laughs> I admit their passion, but there's only so much adulting I can handle in one day, and I need to reserve some for later. It's then that I notice the customer having some problems with the change machines. She frowns as she swipes her card through the slot, and again and again, with a little red error light popping each time she does so. Come on, come on, this was working earlier. Sensing an opportunity to provide excellent customer, ser excellent customer service, further proving my adulting chops, I step in to help. Hello, good morning, I'm the manager here. Can I be of some assistance? So shockingly familiar, have we met before? Oh, right, I had better to check out my arcade, didn't I? I guess that's What's why up? she's here. Hey, hey, good to see ya. Love what you've done with the place, just love it. Something's wrong with your credit card readers. My card's legit. I was using it earlier with no issue, but now it's all messed up and stuff. Can you help me? I pay. I could pay cash if I got it. I'm not trying to check out and run on you, but I'd really prefer to use the card. Fortunately, I happen to have an expert in all things digital in my employ. Uh, she can clear up your credit card problem nice and quick. A virus? Sure thing. Miss, can you please swipe your card across my screen? This takes a customer by surprise. She hesitates briefly before doing as asked. Right, you have an iris. I remember that. Now processing. Please enjoy the recorded music. Bad command or file leak? Huh, that's odd. It says your card was declined. Cancelled, even. I'm sure this is just a misunderstanding, but whatever. I've got cash. Plenty of cash. It's no problem at all. I'll take care of myself. Thanks for trying. Kuzo goes about her business, using a fistful of ones and various bits of change to pay her way through. She's very eager to get out of here, actually. That's odd. Really odd. Might need to keep an eye on that one. Hey, guys. Sorry about the abrupt ending. It's just that I live streamed this, and I'm trying to do 30-minute segment videos just so I can put this on the YouTube page, and you guys can get a full playthrough of the game. I'm trying not to cut out anything, so sorry if I miss something. I will probably go back or something like that. But... Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy. Again, I want to say thank you to Arcade Spirits for letting me play their game early. And if you guys want your own copy, then make sure you go ahead and go buy it. Because it's now available for the Xbox One, PS4, and now the Nintendo Switch. Go buy it. I don't know what you're waiting for. But I hope you guys enjoy. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode, which will come out tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I just want to say that this is your Cat the Chippy speaking. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.